All right, hello to all. Uh, Sam here. We're uh, mid-morning, December 8th, and it seems like a good day for an update on Bitcoin, considering uh, the insanity of yesterday, and now we're seeing the first, I guess you would call it, um, you know, semi-meaningful correction. I mean, it's a $2,000 swing that we're, we've experienced here, but... You know, in Bitcoin, uh, really, you know, the, the 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 relativeness of degree and relationship to swings is is being a bit distorted. But we can see here we've put in this this top here. Now the, we had some hot boxes drawn here. These are all Fib clusters, and just just so you get an idea of where that came from. So all, all I'm doing is I'm just just using the alternate price projection, and I'm projecting from. From the the wave one, from the two low, we uh, were two and through there. That one didn't catch it. So there were some lower boxes that we've already br blown through. So now I'm taking from the start of what is, appears to be the one wave of this most recent wave. And you can see now <clears throat> we had the 2618 up here. That was the, uh, the box up here. And then going again from the length of one from what I have as the four now, that was the box here where we had the overlap here of the, or the the box here where we had the one six one eight one seven five, which is an extreme for a fifth, and that may have may have caught it here. We went through the six one eight just a little bit, but we're in the box. So potentially, so what's the point of all that? Just to see if this is a technical pivot. It, it, you know, why would it stop there, right? When it's just blasting off. Now, take note here. Now, this is on Bitstamp, where so we had some pretty wide differences in in the. Uh, in the highs that were put in yesterday, from GDAX to Bit to to Bitstamp to um, to Bittrex, Polonix, so there were different highs. But since I've been working off of Bitstamp as the reference chart for most of these videos, I'm going to continue to use it. So the idea here is to make these same fib swing relationships to whatever exchange you're trading on. The idea is to know how to do it, not necessarily to be copying exactly what I'm showing you here on Bitstamp, more just the, the, the technique of what I'm doing so you can apply it to your exchange. So given that we have potentially a pivot here that, that, that may, be, may be significant, so I can pull these off now. So potentially, we have the third wave in here, just potential. Right? We can't we can't quantify it just yet, but it, the the count would certainly make sense for you know this the extreme three here, relative. To, but you see what we've got here. So on the largest degree, we've got a one two, but then another one two followed by another one two. So we we are not even approaching if this count is going to hold. Here's the third of the largest degree, and I've wicked this up here with some extremes. So of of the the third so to the green degree here that would be the third this would be potentially the fifth of this degree one degree lower here in blue so right now all we can see is that we have the potential for a five wave structure to have completed it was technical so we may well have a three top in here for us to start measuring for a potential fourth. Well, so first thing we're going to do is just use the basics. So we would just pull from our wave potentially, what I have labeled as a wave two, to our wave three high, or at least it's our high uh, to right now. Now, on a daily chart here, this would put our, our potential wave four here. Well, you know, this is kind of interesting. So we get this little wick right here where we'd have potential resistance maybe offering some support. So that's that's worth noting as a, our prior wave three high. <clears throat> so th this is, you know, this is the zone we're looking for, right? So somewhere in here between the 382 and the 50 for the fourth. But before we can get comfortable about <clears throat> a correction being complete uh, and having the kind of structure we would look for, if we're going to come down that far, so the 382 is at 11, call it 11.4, and the 50 at um, you know 9,900 approximately, at least on Bitstamp. So our, can we spot, can we get the subdivision that we would want to see here to give us an ABC? And if I put the wave on it, you get the idea. So can can we see that kind of subdivision to give us more confidence in the structure and the geometry of the market to give us confidence that we have a completed three-wave correction of this entire impulse wave. 
down into a fourth. And that's that's really the only way we can we can be definitive about the correction. And even then, it's always just a probability play. So this would be the targets we'd be looking for on the daily chart. Now, it seems that that seems a long way down, right? So from our high of 17 coming down to the the you know call it between 11 and 10. You know, the one caveat that I continue to mention whenever we're talking about Bitcoin is that, you know, with 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 Wall Street coming into the into the game uh, this month, the one thing I can promise you is they are not going to want to pay all time high prices. So with the the. With the addition of the futures contracts on the major U.S. exchanges, it's going to be a lot easier for them to short the market. And with the, you know, the, I think it's reasonable to project that we have some, some nervous longs, that we have some weak hands, if you will, that are holding longs here. They may be margined. They may be, you know, a, little, a bit over their skis in terms of where they should be. They've got a lot of profit. And so the tendency to either trail with a stop or upon any meaningful correction to to jump out of the market because they're either scared out or stopped out remains fairly high here. So, you know, it, that's that's thinking it through. But as I will often uh, add to that, you know, you can't trade what you think. You got to trade what you see. And the one thing that we can see, in fact, you can see it right here, is that any weakness is being just absorbed very quickly. So we, we went from a high here of, I'll just to round numbers, call it 17 down to, you know, 13.5, right? That was the swing low that we did here. And we've already taken back half of it. So let, let's go down to the smaller, smaller degree and see if we can get a handle on it. So from the daily, I'm going to go to the hourly where we can pick this apart and get a better look at it. So let me open this up. I mean, the scale is just so crazy here. So let me let me get this open. So we have two potential roadmaps here as we go down to the hourly. So within that, <clears throat> within this count, here's the one, two potential for a fourth to be in. So let me pull some of this off since we won't need it. Here's, here's our, our target range up here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So from the three, four, so we start the, potentially now the fifth. Well, very well could be that our fourth is in because that would make perfect sense. So from our, our wave two low here of this fifth wave on the one hour, from our wave two, we're going to pull from our wave three high and we come just a few ticks to, through the 50. So, and clearly we can see that we get, let me open this up. So we get, we get an ABC, right? Right into the, right into the 50. So potentially we're, we're done with that correction. So how, you know, how would we know? Well, if if we're done here, we need to see an impulsive move coming out of that, i.e. a five wave structure. Now, it could be a diagonal because we're talking about a fifth wave where we could have a diagonal in the fifth. That would not be um, that would not be uh, something that would be surprising as there's a battle here to maintain the trend and push for new highs. But we so we have two possibilities. One is that we've got an ABC and that we are now just starting the one two of the fifth, right, to this degree here in white. So that would be A, B, C. Now we'd be looking for a one, two. But we also have to allow for the possibility that we've just put in an A wave. Now we put in a B, and we'd be looking for this completion now on a C wave here. So we'd have potentially a zigzag. So how would we know? Well, we'd want to, we'd be looking for a five wave structure to complete the C wave. So if I put the put the wave on that. So you get the idea. So we'd have an ABC into the A wave, then an ABC into the B wave, and we'd be looking for a five wave structure to complete the C wave. And, you know, and I'm just, I'm just kind of freestyling here. But if we come down here, this would be a, a reasonable spot to expect it. That's the 61865 window. And then I've also got here, let me sort of, if I can get it, highlight it here there we go so i'm taking the length of what potentially could be the a wave here I and mean, if i wiggle that you see that maroon line that's the 100 percent length of a projected from what may be may be we don't know for sure yet may be the b high and that would give us a nice <clears throat> a nice little cluster down here so there would be your buy box if we're going to come down in five we don't know that we are but right now this looks like what we what we may be seeing so until, so the other alternative, of course, so if I take that off, 
The other assumption would be that we're just we're just starting off on a one two before we go three four five, right? So we see that. So I'd have to squeeze this down a little bit. So that's 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 what we'd be looking for to determine whether or not the correction is over and in. We'd need to see a one two and then support to hold here and then a break of this high to take us up to a three and then a four and a five. Then potentially we're completing on at least this degree here a five wave sequence. Then we'd be reevaluating and considering, it, okay, do we have a top? So if, if we have, uh, this is three, four, five, then if we think back to our, if we think back to our daily up here, so if so, the, the the one assumption is the correction is over and that we're going up to put in new highs. Given the size of this, you know, I th I think we've got to keep this. You know, if if not an alternate, certainly you got to keep that somewhere so you're not surprised by it. But given the the length of this move and how quickly it happened to make that shallow of a retracement of the entire thing. So let me put that put that on there so you can see it. So let me get the 23.6 on that because that, that certainly is a contender. So this would be a 23.6, so not unusual. So note we're a couple of ticks from the 23.6. So in a, as strong as Bitcoin has been, that, that certainly is not unreasonable to think that we have a shallow fourth. We, we know this is, a, this is not an unusual place for a fourth in a very strong market. Um, but you know it remains to be seen, right? So we can't be, we can't just be buying with both hands, or at least let me rephrase that. I wouldn't be until I see more evidence here of where exactly we are, because I don't know. I can't, I can't be definitive about where we are until I see how this unfolds here. So given that, knowing that we may, we may, because remember on the daily it's at the 23, on the one hour we wick the 50. So. You know, to, I, I guess to some degree, you want to be conscious of where you are on the larger degree. But if you're going to trade off the hourly, make your decisions, your entry and your exit based off of the hourly, if that's what you're trading off of. Right. Don't don't switch. Don't don't enter the market and then rationalize based on what you see on the daily that the gaps will be way too big. The spread from where you're long and where your stop should be will be will be too big. If you're entering off the hourly, do all of your trade management off of the hourly. Just, just a suggestion for you. So again, so what, so what would we be looking for? If, so if I pull this off, if we are going to get a one-two, and this is not just a, this is not just a B wave, well, of course we're going to expect to see some some fib relationship here. So knowing that a two can go as deep as the seven eight six, somewhere in this range, we'd be looking between the fifty and the and the seven eight six to put in a two wave. And then we're going to want to see an impulsive move coming out of that to be sure that we don't just have an A, B, and then we're going down for the C. So, <clears throat> of course, you don't know. You don't know, right? There's no way to be absolutely definitive about it. So if you were going to be a buyer here and you're, and you're playing for new highs, well, then it's a matter of money management. Where are you going to put your stop? You know, other side of the 786, that's... That's reasonable. You know, you want to be tighter with it, get on the other side of the 65. But if you're really going to give it room to breathe here, so maybe you take a smaller position here because we can't be sure where we are. Uh, that's a reasonable spot. And you may not make the 618. We may just pivot right here at the 50, again, considering how strong the market is. So if you're going to be a buyer at the 50, then this is a question of, you know, what, what kind of risk tolerance do you have and what's appropriate for your account size? Can you, t can you handle the spread between a buy at the 50 and a stop on the other side of the 786? If not, put it on the other side of the 6.5 and accept that you may get stopped out and ultimately the market may, may you know, end up going in your favor. So that's that's a decision you have to make. Uh, for me, I'm I'm not ready to to add, I'm already long, so I'm not ready to add add to my position. I'm I'm to some degree playing a little bit of defense um, to lock in profit. So I this I would be I would be surprised. I would be surprised if all we're going to do is that is the twenty three six right. But you know, Bitcoin is full of surprises. This would surprise me if that's all we got out of this, considering how extreme that move is. I, I would I would be more comfortable taking a, a a nice position right here at the 38 than I would at the 23 because I'd like to see a little more definition there. But that's that's just my view of it. The other the other alternative count is over here, which we can't 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll get some comments where people say, well, there's no way that that could be complete there. It could be. It could be. We, again, we can't be definitive. So we could have the top of the third in relative to the largest degree. That's possible. And again, that, I'm not saying that we couldn't go, you know, to, to a million from here. That could well be just the one wave of the absolute largest degree. So Bitcoin bulls, don't, don't get your panties in a bunch. I'm just saying that potentially we may have, you can't discount that. That could be, we, we certainly could potentially have a fifth in of the third. And th so why does that matter? Well, well, why do we need this count? Because it's all relative to where we're going to look for the fourth. So if that were in, if that were in, we'd be pulling from the two to the what potentially could be the three high looking for the four. Right? That's why it's real that's why it matters and why you want to keep this count because that potentially that that certainly is is not to, you know out of out of possibility right that could be so now it's this is extreme and would imply a third wave which is why this is an alternate not a primary but i i want to keep this at, at at hand just in case you know we start to get a more meaningful correction this is a possibility so i i would keep both of those counts on hand i'd be watching you know i i certainly would use the daily as a reference given how extreme this is moving but if we're going to go down to the hourly let's let's look for the tells let's look for the clues do do we get get a reaction down here we're coming right into the pocket here between the 50 and the 618 do we get a reaction here and then do we move away from it impulsively you see that so it's, you know, and then, of course, you'd want to wick off this wave one high. You know, we're going to stay impulsive. Here, here's, you know, potentially the 100%. The, the so if we were going to get an A, B, C, this would be deeper. And if we consider that back to the hourly, if I look at this from the wave two here to the wave three high, Again, look at that overlap here, right? So we got the 618, 100%. So d nothing, should, n nothing should surprise you in Bitcoin. The potential for this to correct severely uh, with Wall Street coming in should not surprise you. And new highs, right? I think we're all past the, the point of amazement that it can continue to go higher. Personally, I think a correction would be healthy for the market. I think we need it to, to set up the energy to continue to move higher. I'm long. I'm a bull. So I'm, I'm not trying to pick a top. I'm just trying to show you what the technicals are, are offering and uh, maybe give you some technique with which you can use to qualify and quantify where we are and potentially a setup for your own trade. Okay, guys, I'll wrap it there.